Okay, welcome to this afternoon's uh, Wealth Creation Show. Today, we're going to be talking about stress testing property investments. I've been doing this all the time since I very first started. I had no idea that's what you call it, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realise that's what I did every single time. It was stress testing my property yeah. investments. Even before I made the decision whether to buy or not, I would go through these numbers, I'd stress test it, and if it made sense and there was a lot of leeway there, this is what I'm talking about. This is all probability of risk analysis as well mm -hmm. um, and opportunity cost, opportunity loss, all what comes into this. is full big thing in this big pitch, bigger picture. Um, I used to do this every single time and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it right now about property investment. Um, so if you're new to property investment, uh, you better hang on because I tell you, there's people that lose in property investment and you look at them and go, how on earth could you lose in property investment? It is a done deal if you do it right. And it's because they actually don't do this. They don't do this in the beginning. So this is the difference between winners and losers in property investment. And, and it, is as, it is as black and white as that reality. There is no green middle ground here. This is how people lose and, and, and win in property investment, period. That's yeah. it. Full stop. Okay. Yeah. Um, Richard, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think stress testing is the, the, obviously a, a good way to explain how that process is, uh, is is put out there. And I think this will draw from a lot of what we've spoke about in other shows today. And I'm quite interested to see where it's going to lead us uh, as we go through the show today. So, um, yeah, I'm a good one. Perfect. OK, let's what's in the news now. What's it? We'll, we'll, we'll quickly cover the news. We'll go on to talk about capital gains. Yeah, that's what I was going to. What's this thing about capital gains? What's going on? Well, the capital gains at the moment, the government um, reportedly looking at ways to shrink the amateur end of the private rented sector. Uh, and they're going to do this by giving incentives to people like accidental landlords and things to try and get them to sell up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously they're doing that to try and um, make more properties available for like first time buyers and things. And they're going to do that by tempting by to let landlords um, with lower capital gains uh, when they do sell. Mm -hmm. Now, this obviously will probably drive up, um, in fact, ultimately will drive up rents, but it will make more property, well, they, they think this is going to make property available for first-time buyers and things. So this is what they're talking about at the moment. But we spoke about it last week, Jim, and, and you were saying that it's almost like they're going to revert back to being like an index, um, an yeah, indexation yeah. and things. Jeez, the, the, I, I think they just think up idea of the month. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like that. That's who I look at. They think up idea of the month and they think, you know, what can we do? To, yeah. to, to please people and, and there's what's going to be a vote winner for us and how we're going to do this and and they just they just come out with it and they just go this is what we're thinking about and then they just see if public opinions on their side and if public opinions on their side I think they just go ahead and and and, and do it that's that's what it comes down to um I'd actually we've done something like this before um mm -hmm. you know about uh the the capital gains rules now, yeah, this, was done in, this was back in December 2020. I'm going to post 20, a link 20, on here yeah. for people so they'll actually see it. So I'm going to post yeah, that so link. Yeah, so that, that five property show was proposed capital gains tax changes, and it was, yeah. I think it went out the 3rd of December 2020. Um, and I, I was so looking what, at that what, after what does this mean then? I mean, what, 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 was, what, what did this all mean? You know, do you want to cover just briefly what this all meant about the, the possible new capital gains rule? This was the Office of Tax simplification because yes. there's like there's like a, all the different ways about calculating capital gains is there's, of course, there's about 10 or 12 different ways depending on what you're getting depending on whether it's property depending on whether it's shares depending on whether it's um whether it, where you're trading as a you're a running company as a, or, or an organization I, thing, or yeah. whether your works are or antiques or whatever it is so this is what the office of office of tax simplification actually came up with so you know in a nutshell what's that what, what happened well, and 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 as explained in that um, in the, in our previous show, the one that was we we uh, done in twenty twenty, um, there was there was a difference put in place because obviously new landlords uh, that had the higher uh, higher rate of taxpayer that was earning higher, obviously their capital gains bill um, was going to be significantly reduced. Yeah. Um, and, and then obviously once under the new proposals, then it was going to it was going to obviously have a, quite a good uh, a, quite a big impact on what their capital gains was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then even at that, there, there was further savings, as you see, the OTS proposals um, and then all capital gains made 
before 2000 as, as well would also be tax free. So there was a lot of implications in that, and there was a lot of interesting facts in that um, in that article that we done in the blog yeah. that we done. Yeah. Um, and this link that you've just posted. So I think it's it's quite good for people to ref uh, refer back to that uh, and look at what we spoke about then and what they're now proposing now. Yeah, this is because they, this is because they reckon they could raise if they did this and change the rules, they could raise about eighteen billion in revenue. Yeah, um, out of tax, out, 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 out of us effectively as yeah. owners. Um, so the average property price in two thousand was fifty eight thousand nine hundred. Yeah. Um. And they were they were thinking about they were, what was what was the whole yeah thing the, the average the, value of five, the, the a five property in two thousand was fifty eight thousand and then and today obviously in the in the article then today obviously the same five property has increased in value to one hundred and seventy eight three hundred or just about one hundred seventy eight yeah. and a half thousand uh, which is meaning there's a profit of one hundred and nineteen four hundred or nearly one hundred and nineteen and a half uh, so a five landlord has, has a higher tax rate pair um, earning sixty thousand a year. Their capital gains bill on that would, uh, would after the annual allowance, would be twenty nine thousand nine hundred eighty eight. Yeah. But then, yeah. as we looked at it under the new rules uh, and the new proposal, the, cap the capital gains tax payable, assuming that the capital gains rate was forty percent uh, and a lower annual uh, allowance of five thousand, the same five landlord would pay twenty three thousand one hundred and seventy, which is a saving of almost about seven thousand pounds. And then that's that, going to say that, 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 is, that is provided, isn't it? That they actually bought their property in the year two thousand or before. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Because because we worked out that anybody that's bought their property recently, or an, or or after the year two thousand, mm -hmm. possibly could end up worse off. Yes. So landlords that have actually held their property for a long time when it changed because indexation used to be in before. Indexation yeah. was in before years ago, and then they changed it to this, you know, flat rate of if you're a low rate taxpayer, it's eighteen percent. If you're a high rate taxpayer, it's twenty eight percent. And then all my indexation was taken away. I had sixty percent allowances on stuff, you know, mm -hmm. for capital gains. So the, the bank bought went and took it away. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't a great, uh, and that, that then obviously discouraged me because I was thinking, wow, that's a this is a perfect opportunity to sell up, and I did. You didn't, didn't on the credit crunch. Just before the credit yeah. crunch happened, I sold quite a few properties. And that yeah. kind of incentivized me to do that because I was getting a, a indexation allowances and I had quite a good amount built up. Um, mm -hmm. But but it stopped me actually selling because the base rate I, I ended up being, wait a minute, I'll be between 28% now right across the yeah. board. So it makes no sense at all. So it really the general rule of thumb out of that was if you've got property you hope you've held or bought before the year 2000, 2000. you'll probably be better off under these new capital gain rules if they do come yeah. in um if you um don't have you'll probably be worse off um so i would say uh, companies though does that no i mean just to, to, to touch on indexation obviously for individuals indexation allowance was frozen in 1998 and then it was eliminated in 2008 um, and indexation allowances currently allow companies and organisations to claim tax-free um, tax relief when they're, they're calculating their chargeable gains. So it is different for individuals and obviously then eliminates but companies. The great, about, um, the great thing about having limited company is your tax on corporation tax company mm -hmm. rate, which is 19% now, could be 20, I can't remember. Um, but if you're an individual, and you're on right and you're a higher rate tax, and rate. Higher rate tax under, the new, yeah. under the new regime that will be added on as your normal income and actually taxed at the higher rate of whatever rate you're on at the time yeah I, i'll be honest i wouldn't expect most private landlords actually to be on a high rate tax um individually anyway um purely for the fact that most are actually putting money aside in order to provide for their 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 uh, their retirement pension and pension, retirement yeah. and stuff like that in the future um, and that's because they don't really make significantly enough, and un, un, enough, um, in order to 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 put away into pension funds and all the rest of it to make a huge amount of money in order to grow their grow their wealth uh, later on. That's why most private landlords only have one or two properties, um, and yeah. because they don't understand the the dynamics of of actually increasing that wealth and generating that wealth. And this is what the wealth creation show is all about. I thought it was interesting because you actually sent an email to someone and they said. Uh, you're just trying to recruit me. And I thought, yeah. recruit you for what? And it's like we're giving you information for nothing on how to be extremely successful in the buy-to-let market. And there's no upsell to this at all. No. I'm not actually asking you to buy into anything. I'm giving you this information from free 
which I would obviously charge other people if I really wanted to do it. I'd be charging them like £5,000 a course for a two-day course to do. And I'm giving that away for free. And I don't charge for courses. Yeah, no. And, and it's like something that we put out there. And... You know the thing about this? What I find interesting, I was t- talking to somebody about this morning. You know the catch? You know the catch of what we're doing right here? Mm-hmm. Is you don't need to do it. Yeah. And that is the catch. And and if you if you if the penny drops when I've actually said that, you'll understand that because it's like you don't need to do it. It's easy to sit on the couch and watch the television and watch time go by yeah. and no realize that your future's flashing before your life as you go into your retirement and you've not provided for it at all. This is why we do this right now to give you that heads up, to give you that information right now so you can understand the dynamics of how people create wealth. It doesn't just fall in your lap. You have to actually do something to get it. And it, again, it comes back, and I love this phrase, if you're not prepared to pay the, the price for success, wait till you get the bill from regret. Yeah, It's, it's a brilliant one, and it really just hits it home very, very um, articulately exactly yeah. what it is. If you don't pay that price, your family's going to pay that price. Your next generation is going to pay that price. Some people think, well, that's the way it is, and that's the way we work. And it's like, well... I don't appreciate the fact that my children might have to work till they die. And if I can do something about that now in long-term planning, so they have the choice whether they want to do that or not, that's perfect for me. That's exactly yeah, that, that's really what, what it's I all do. about. I think ultimately that is, that is what it's all about for uh, for individuals and themselves, but like you see, families and, and your children and things as well and, and setting that up for the future. And that's and, and and this is what things like this like we do obviously to to chat and share uh, advice and help and just and help people try and create their own wealth. Um, right, and, uh, yeah, and and it's and it is it's all free and it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. And that's probably the problem. It's free because people often treat things that are for free. They just treat it like it's casual, but they don't yeah. realise the opportunity is right in front of them and literally the value it's on what we're talking about right now. You'll yeah. not get this information shared by anybody else, what we're about to talk about, about stress testing, because everybody, you know, they feed you into a course. In other words, they give you a free session. They give you just enough in order to get you, a, you know, yeah. ding, ding, cha-ching, <laughs> <laughs> photograph taking. <laughs> I've got you <laughs> on the hook. Um, and that's, that's, that's effectively what they're doing, isn't it? So they just get you into that system and then there's the upsell all the way through. And the next minute, before you know it, you're on a £20,000 mentorship course for a year. It's yeah. like, what happened there? And that's why people have got that kind of programmed into them that if something's free, then they immediately question, well, what's the catch? Can you, that yeah. can it, it can't just be free. So, yeah. And the catch but, is uh, when they need to do it. Yeah. That's it, ultimately. So Office of Tax Response, uh, um, Tax Simplification, Again, you can read that article. I posted it yep. in the comments down below. So down below, I posted that in the comments. You can read it. You can watch the show as well. And we we'll talk about it. Um, and we actually might do another show on that in the future because that yeah, was twenty. Um, but it's still worth to go over that again and realise now we're thinking about what we're thinking and where we are right now. Mm-hmm. What's the implications from this now? If that was actually come in, the implications is to be honest, check with your accountant whether these numbers work. But but you should seriously be looking at setting your company up in a limited company. I, I can't stress it enough. That there's a lot more. Um, uh, it's a lot easier to 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 do buy to let in limited companies now. Yeah. It may cost you a wee bit more in terms of getting accounts done at the end of the year. It may be a wee bit of work in doing your day to day accounts, but I suppose it isn't because you've still got to do that as a normal. You know, if you're earning it yourself. Um, mm-hmm. The. Uh, uh, no, it's, there's there's no real difficulty to it. I mean, we did that um, uh, in a private Zoom session, session, you know, on the last Thursday, and we did about setting up a limited company, and you saw how easy that was. Yeah, um, it is, so and it's I, people's people's fear of setting it up wrong, and oh, am I going to do it right, and things, and it is really simple. And I what if I set up wrong? What if I lose out? What if I what if I end up costing me money in the long run because I don't realise what I'm doing, and I don't realise how that jigsaw fits together mm-hmm. in this whole buy to let thing. Um, but that's how we, that's how, you know, I take you through the, again, it's another course. It's somebody actually would take you through and charge you a bloody fortune for. Yeah. <laughs> and I there's folk on there doing that. <laughs> and we're free. 
<laughs> we, need to, we need to come up with another word rather than free. Um, yeah, no, because uh, everything that anybody hears free, it's like they're a cart. So there's got to be a cart. Yeah. I'll maybe stand in lean down. I'll maybe stand in some high streets and start giving out fivers again and see what happens with people. <laughs> like, avoid me. It's like, oh, no, no, there must be a cart. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's talk about stress testing then. Yeah. Let's get on to this. Um, so, uh, what is stress testing? I think, well, like you say, it's looking at, um, look obviously, the whole property sourcing and purchasing process. It's looking at what the property price is going to be, what you're going to have to put into there, uh, the money that you're going to need to turn that into a viable buy to let, make it compliant, get it up and running, yeah. uh, looking at all these figures and, and, and ultimately how it all works. Um, and and does that do the numbers add up as well yeah absolutely <sighs> let's look at property sourcing first because this is where it yeah. all comes from this is where the journey starts i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly go on to another uh, a website you know probably a traditional website um have we got uh google um let's uh, we've got a google here you see that google yep okay so let's go on um we'll go on zoopla Now, believe it or not, I go on Zoopla all the time because not every agent goes on Zoopla uh, on Rightmove because um, Rightmove is actually quite dear. Um, yeah. Could you do Zoopla now? Yeah, and Zoopla is good for picking up the solicitors and things. They do well like deceased estates and things, which are high. Exactly, you know, we, we've done another property sourcing course before, or, or um, you know, I wouldn't have, I hate to call it a course eh, because it's no, it's no chargeable tutorial. Um, <laughs> aye, aye, it's a, it's a tutorial. Yeah. Um, so we've gone through that before about setting up and property sourcing, and, and we could go on that in deep detail in, in another session. If anybody wants out there, please feel free to mention in the comments what you want us to talk about, because yeah. I'll give you any information you want about how to be successful in property investment and wealth creation. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I'll go to somebody that does. So that's mm -hmm. that's the reality, because I know I know I know where everybody gets all their information. So quickly, what I go on is I go into these websites, and, and it depends on what area. But I'm quickly doing Fife right now. But um, you could do Cooper, you could do St Andrews, you could do Leven, you can do Methil, you could do Buckhaven. But I, I typically go for the filters, and I, I I go for the lowest price first. Yeah, I, and I'll tell you the reasoning behind that in a minute. Um, so lowest price first. I'm quickly looking through. Obviously, I've skipped, 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 skipped. They're all land and the rest yeah. of it. Uh, land for sale in Kirkcaldy. Uh, well, you could build there, but I don't know if it's really worth it. Um, there's a guy priced Alexandra Street, Dunfermline. I mean, 40 grand. That's a no brainer. If you get that for under 40 grand, you're not paying any stamp due on it, by the way. Mm -hmm. There's no 4% yeah. ADS under there. Um, you've got land for sale there. You've got another one bedroom in Methyl High Street. There's one just added 40 grand for us. Um, that's one, yeah. God, that's a no brainer. Eh? It's flipping heck. Uh, look at that. Like, I think I was going to say it's a decent size, that one, yeah. Uh, and kitchens, uh, the kitchen looks like it's in the lounge? Uh, it's a bit of a studio set up but for the for the main living area, but it's got a separate bedroom. So. All right, now, bear that in mind, this one, right? This is this is what I do, I drill into it, and I just quickly look at it. Uh, we've got a virtual tour on there for a video. We'll not we'll no go into the details, but I'll quickly look at the floor plan. Can you see the floor plan? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so kitchen, lounge, bedroom, shower room, utility, great stuff. Uh, what would you get in rent for that? That's a good wee flat, and I mean, one bed's uh, like that. I mean, we're, we're getting about three seven five for a one bed just now. Do you think though a studio flat would get that in in, in metal? Where that uh, is, but well, three fifty at least. I mean, you're not going to be less than that. So we err on the side of caution, and we say three fifty. Let's jump back to the search results. We'll we'll take a wee note of that because that'll go in for a thing. So forty grand and three fifty. Yeah. Okay. Um. So let's look at guide price then. We've got Station Road Kelly. Okay, there's a one bedroom at forty four. There's Henry Crescent one bedroom. There's uh, um he, uh, High Street Newbury. Um. I know these properties. Ah, they're all right. They're pretty good. Um. One bedroom there. Two bedroom at the Causeway. Anyway. Now we're getting into serious business. Um. We're getting a fifty grand one there at the Causeway. It's above the pub and. Quick look through there. Ah, but still, I mean, some people are no bothered. The, the good bothered. thing is, it's, it's right next to the shopping centre mm -hmm. and the bus you station. Switch, you switch the telly off, eh? I know, I know. Like, that, how, how nice do you sell a house like that? I'm like, oh, come and look at this attractive proposition. It looks shit by it. By, yeah. The like, telly's on you. and the blinds are shut. The lights need on, blinds are shut, and all the rest of it. God's yeah. sake. Um, I, I take no, it that may be a tenant in property already. There's, a, there's actually two of them. Hallelujah, I've got a floor plan for a change. Yeah. Okay, living room, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, kitchen. Uh, okay, so two bedroom. So you've got a two bedroom there. Uh, it's not got a garden, I would, I would imagine. So no. we're sitting at 49 for that. 
How much would that get you, Ring? Uh, you're talking about 450 for that. 450. Would it be? I, I will talk about that later on. But what about attractiveness? You know, in terms of in terms of lo, in terms of low demand, would something like that be less attractive for a tenant? I mean, there's a few, there's a few things about it that that I think would maybe be questioned. Where, but, but because there's such a high demand just now, and yeah. and we're still we're still so, low stock. So we're all um, singing all dancing now. It and would we're let. It really would let. Return. And everybody's wanting everything, and it does say possibly being oh, yeah, sold I mean, with long-term sitting tenant. So it could actually have long-term sitting tenant. It depends how much they're paying, though. Um, I would still be interested to know that. Uh, and plus the fact it's an older style property. EPC, where's that about? Uh, EPC, come on, where's your EPC? Uh, I don't think it's there. Uh, no, it has to be by law. There you go. Uh, D. So that's not a great EPC, because is it no meant to be by C by a certain time? It's to be C by 2025. They're talking about extending that to 2026, but that's only for new lets. So if you've got this tenant in place and they do stay in place, you won't have to upgrade it to a C until 2028. Yeah, but C could as be long a as the tenant money stays upgrade. in place. Because look, it says current 57, potential 59, so it will never, ever get beyond a, a, a D. Now, yeah, because, I mean, a D is not the worst rating, but then it's got when, a, its potential. That's got dispensation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So we've got dispensation for that one. Um, you've got because um, the law actually says if you can't get it any better and it's going to be prohibitive, um, we'll no, we'll no force you to say you've got to upgrade it and you, you know, because we'd still need letting properties. Yeah. So it does say it says lightly cash buy as well. It could be the fact that it's over a pub. It, that's the reason as well. Eh? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the, what, it's the swan that's below that. The swan yeah. Pub. So let's pop back again. Glass and treat one bedroom flat. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we're sitting at fifty grand. How much rent? You would get three seven five for a one bed in Gladstone Street. I mean, if you wanted to stay on the air, of course. Sorry. What about the way it looks now? I think it looks fine. That's is that off street parking on there as well? Oh, it looks a bit like it's needing a wee bit of looks. So you can see um, tint where the stuff's been taken off. That looks like smoke damage, kind of like sm a smoker. Yeah. I have it's, a funny feeling you've got to do a wee refurb on that because it looks it, negative. Yeah, the pictures are smaller for me. I was just going to say it. It does have off-street parking, though. It looks pretty negative. Uh, does it? Yeah, keep going. There you oh, go. There you go. And that, so a lot of these ones... At 50, and you think 375? Yeah, definitely if it's got off-street parking. So let's put big, back the pictures big, up. Yes. So there's a two-bedroom flat in Denmark, 50 grand. It's been on for quite that, a while, that, actually. That has, I was just going to say, that's been on for quite a while, and I've looked at it and looked at it, and I thought, I wonder what's putting people off. I mean, the garden's not great, but the, the property itself, I thought, that's a good flat. I would let that in no time. Yeah. So, 50, two-bed flat, how much? Uh, 475. But you reckon that's top of the end, though? Top end, when good condition? Yeah, well, I mean, again, it, that looks pretty. It looks like it there's needs, damp it needs, there. It needs decor and things, but once it's done, right, I've got a funny feeling it looks like there's damp there. There's staining. Yeah, but the, um, the four in the block ex local authorities in Buckhaven, Denwalk, we're getting four seven five for them. Easy. Yeah, decent enough. Kitchen. kitchen looks okay. Yeah, it does look a wee bit run down though. You look, you know, they've they've painted over that sort of PVC wallpaper. See in the back. Yeah. The way that's done. Um, the boiler is older. You can see that's not a condenser mm -hmm. boiler. That's an old ideal wall mounted. So yep. the boiler's a bit dated. Back garden's a bit worse for uh, wear. So it could need a wee bit spent on it. Probably about what? Maybe about six grand. Yeah, a few thousand. Uh, six, seven thousand maybe. Um, okay. To get that looking good and getting four, seven, five a month. Uh, see, it's this closing date. And, and, and it, but yet there's no sold on it. So when was the closing date then? Apparently in April, but there's no sold. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, it's sat uh, for see, a long time. There's the 67 C and D, but potential C is 78. So that's where you would be required probably to get it to a C. Yeah, and the and thing is, if you potentially a new boiler in there, um, would probably bring that up. Yeah. If, you need to put, yeah, if you needed to put one in. You can see that could be easily done, though. There's two bedrooms <laughs> there, there's two bedrooms there, there's two bedrooms there, two bedrooms, one bedroom there, one bedroom there. 
quickly jump on the next um land for sale kid street uh kid street any good kirkcaldy mm, kid street's not the best i don't know right bypass um, but in high demand times, it'll probably be taken, wouldn't it? But, uh, but in high demand times, I mean, like that's what we're seeing properties in areas that usually maybe a bit sticky are, are, are letting really quickly because of the yeah. demand. Yeah, there's a wow three bedroom garden den, three bedroom terrace house for sixty grand. Yeah, and that's been that's just gone on uh, about a week ago. So let's have a wee look in there. See these pictures, all right? Yeah. Again, God, it's flopping heck. Can you not take better pictures? <laughs> Bloody hell. It's like they look dire, eh? I mean, it is, it is a wee bit run down, but it doesn't mean to say you've got to neglect it with everything, even the I pictures. Uh, so it's needing a fair bit of work done at that one. That's it needs why. a wee bit done. Yeah, that's a wee bit. But then obviously price point reflects that. Yeah, that, that looks... That's a repo. See the sticker? So it is. Yeah, so that's asset so that's management. Sold as, that'll be sold as seen. Yeah, so take your risk, and there's a flat roof of the back. It looks like a half baked extension of the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like off street parking, oh, garden, yeah, that. Parking. A bit of work to do on that, but some, you know, it'll make somebody a good family home. It's possibly not one I would want to because I don't want to outlay a lot of cash in the beginning yeah. unless I'm doing a reef, a major reef, but getting contractors is the most of the hassle. So Barry Street, here's another one. Barry Street's Street, a good one. I've got a, a couple that I've just done in the recent uh, so last couple bed, of years. And a half. Barry Street and Metal. Let's and we're that. Have a wee look through first, and then you can tell me what you're thinking at that. Looks no bad, eh? Yeah. That's quite nice, actually. Wet room. Wet, wet room's no ideal, but it's not the, it's not the end of the world. Well, actually, I mean, I believe I know I actually prefer that to a shower. Because a shower, yeah. you're in a cubicle, that's a lot more open. And then kitchen's like, no great. Well, the pictures are no great. The pictures <laughs> are it's like, I would probably change that blue worktop. I was just going to say, a, a new worktop and a lucky pane, it might be fine. I might not even need a lucky pane. Yeah, I mean, from a different angle, it looks all right, yeah? Yeah, it's actually not too bad. And bedrooms the blue, the blue and wardrobes. Yeah, overall, you know, not the greatest photo um, for that. Somebody's been playing about with the contrast, you can see that. Eh? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> the green has gone, whoo! <laughs> 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 oh dear. Clearly no getting a professional photographer out then. Um, yeah, that's that's quite a good one. And that's just up from the old doctor surgery, which was refurbed that we sold, mind. Yeah, and yeah. Down, the purple cat's there in the corner. Have you ever yeah. liked the purple? In the corner, um, so that's actually no bad because uh, when you when you look out for there, it's a shame it's not got it. But you're actually looking over um, a grass area. I think I don't mm -hmm. think ah um, yeah, you're looking over a grass area and it goes it's off to, to the Wheatley left Street. a wee bit. It goes to Wheatley Street, doesn't it? Yeah, that it points out to Wheatley Street, which is actually quite good. So that's a pretty good one, and um, and we'll we'll no floor plan. Damn. Um, okay, PC. description no floor plan, uh, no EPC. Uh, that shouldn't be on the market, by the way, whoever that is. Um, you've got no EPC on there, and you're no meant to advertise properties without an EPC. Breaking yeah. the law, and, oh, that's a solicitor. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Oh, what the world coming, eh? It's like, God, I mean, you've got people that are, uh, we need to get proper qualifications in for for uh, estate agents, don't we? Yeah. You know, just like we've got for Letwell, we should be doing it for estate agents. It's, uh, and it should be mandatory. Anyway, we've got enough to go on with, haven't we? Yeah. To talk about what we're doing. Uh, let's remove that then. Okay, now, uh, spreadsheet time. Uh, I'll take that off. Um, let me get rid of that. Uh, I wonder if I could share another one. Uh, stop sharing. No, I could do that. Spreadsheet time. Oh, actually, let's go to, let's go back to that post because I need to look up uh, interest rates. Right, okay. Um, so just bear with me, um, uh, and I'll go on. Uh, I think it was possibly, no, that's going to no look right. Uh, Zoopla Chrome tab. See that all right still? It's just, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, mortgage work. So let's jump on the mortgage work. I was, I was thinking about the mortgage work to so look at the current rates because um, they're the biggest buy-to-let lender. 
uh, mortgage works for intermediaries. You can't get direct with mortgage works, by the way. You have to go through your broker, but it still gives you the product. So I usually find out what product I'm going to get, work it all out, and then just tell the broker that's the one I'm getting. Um, I don't know. I, I like to. I like to just tell them that's that's what I'm getting. Job done. Limited company buy to let. Um, so we'll look at that. Uh, select client type. Um, we'll select all the different uh, rates. Let's just go for the full booner. Um, and then we could work out exactly where we are with things. Just do purchase now. So we're looking at, ideally, we're looking at 75% loan to values. Um, yeah. Because you don't want to trade it up. See, look, the 80% jumps up 1%. You see that? Yeah, I see that, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's over two years, but it just jumps up 1%. And I, and I wouldn't want to do that. 75% loan to value jumps up 1%, but that's fixed for five years instead of one year. You might actually want that, 3.19. I think that's a really good rate for a, a buy-to-let limited company. Now, you're paying um, 3.19, but you're paying two grand in fees um, at 75% LTV. Okay? Um, if so you look at another five year, you're, you're down and you're paying 3.24, and you're only paying 995 and then you are none at 3.47 for zero arrangement fees okay i'm going to use that as a classic example about a five year because i think five years are a good deal um because we're assuming everybody's holding on and on holding on to to long term so five years probably a really good deal now um i don't see i just see rates going up there it's it's there's no great great proposition in that um so we've got our rates for a buy to let We've got our numbers in terms of what we're looking to buy for. Um, I'm going to pop that. I'm going to share the screen now and do a share of this, my spreadsheet. Yep. And we'll start crunching some numbers here. See that okay? Yeah. Let's be getting carried away buying eight properties. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy eight, you get away with the four, four. If you buy more than six, you get away with a 4% ADS. That's why it goes on an average. Um, okay. So let's take the first one uh, at 40,000. Uh, 40, no, actually, let's, let's take the highest one. Um, we're talking about the one at uh, Denwalk, 50 grand. Yeah. Is that right? Or was it yep. 63 and a half? No, no, the two bedroom. Ah, there was oh, one yeah. at 63 and a half. And that, was the, that was the three bed in Carbondale. Yeah. That uh, was always the... at, sorry, I'm talking yeah. rubbish. Uh, 50 grand. 50 grand, two bedroom, Denwalk, Buckhaven. But that's it. This is a no-brainer. I could tell you the answer before we start the journey. Um, 4%, 25% down, which is 75% loan to value. Now, you are uh, 3.19, and that's over five years. Okay. Uh, by the way, I am not a mortgage broker. I am not giving financial advice. This is just what I do in stress testing. So... You want to see what I do. This is what I'm showing you. I'm not telling you you need to do this, but this is what I do. And it yeah. works for me every single time. Arrangement fee on that one is two grand. Um, so yeah, it was you're, you're, talking about, you're, yeah, you're talking about more or less about, oh around about 5.5% of the, of the loan. And so 5.5%. Some of the lenders actually won't give you 50 grand, by the way. Some will borderline 50 grand as a minimum. Some are now 60 um mm -hmm. so you've got to ask your mortgage broker what gives you that so i'm just assuming at this point in time we are there um but we'll, we'll stress test it at different levels and show you how it works um now see that interest rate see yep. there one two four six okay now that's over five years the one two four six i'm quickly going to, going to do a calculation here and i'm going to show you what i'm thinking so if i do a thousand pound less over five years for over five years i have to pay 3.24 and the arrangement yeah. fee. So the arrangement fees go down by a thousand pounds. All right. Mm -hmm. Now that brings me to an interest rate of one two eight one. Okay. Plus one two eight one minus one four six is thirty five quid extra a year. Right. You know what I'm doing here? Eh? Plus thirty five mm -hmm. times five because it's five years is one hundred seventy five quid. It is a no-brainer at this point in time to not the to do the two grand one and the two grand fixed fee and just go for the 3.24. So a slightly higher rate with a lower yeah. uh, up front. And then you're, you're, you're only on at two and a half or something. So you're about there yeah. in terms of your arrangement fee. So that makes sense to do that, right? Yeah. So we're at 1281 now. 
um, sorry, I'll stand corrected. Um, uh, where are we? 124. So 1245. 1245. One, two, I'm over, I'm over tightening up by any chance. No, I'm fine. 1245. And then when I change it um, to 3.47, it comes to 1CCC. That's another no brainer. Yeah. I would actually go for the 3.47 now. Because over five years, that's another 440 quid, and yet you're getting it for zero arrangement fee. I was just going to say, that's no arrangement fee. That's so fucking much. No, usually, typically, you go for the middle one, but they've actually done that. So they're, they're incentivizing you to fix it 3.47 for five years. So I'd go for the 3.47 for five years. because Hopefully, everybody understands that. If you understand mm -hmm. that, give my thumbs up, um, just so we make sure, or, or type five in the comments, something like that. That's a really good yeah. example uh, what stress testing and and that yeah. actually shows you because you've just you've just worked out there with what you actually thought was maybe uh, wasn't exactly accurate because you were thinking it's going to be the middle one but really yeah worked out usually the one. typically it's always the 999 yeah. is the best one to pay for the arrangement fee but it works out over the long of the five years fixed rate you're better at 3.47 in that choice yeah and um, so that's us decided we're going for the zero arrangement fee in that scenario so that hopefully that shows everybody from the beginning what we're doing now mm -hmm. at the fifty thousand, you were thinking four seven five you were going to need to spend a wee bit of money on that though wouldn't you you probably need to about six or seven yeah so you're probably about six or seven so initial equity after you've done it if you're doing buy to let straight away and you've done it then initial equity is the two thousand pound down here see in that bottom corner there mm -hmm. So that's the le that's the legal fees and a bit of work maybe just for if you're okay just to move in and do your electrical safety certificate and your smoke detectors that kind of covers that and um, mm -hmm. with the lawyer fees as well. So we're talking about in that scenario it was about six grand. Yeah. To do that, do so that, I'm kind of thinking about eight eight thousand in there. Um, so I'm putting eight thousand in there um, as well. So I'm all in, including my deposit for twenty two five hundred. See that. So twenty two five hundred all in. I've got the eight grand there, which is that. I've got the two grand, which I'm paying in stamp duty, and I've got the deposit, which I'm paying as well. That's what adds up to that amount here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the key here is, I've got this right, the four percent stamp duty. I've got my deposit right. I've got my three point four seven rate is correct because it's five years fixed. Interest rates are right. Uh, rent's right. Um, me, uh, the occupancy rate is twelve months. It's assumed now. So top line rent is, that's the maximum I could earn. Interest is that. It's going to be that every single year because it's an interest-only mortgage I'm getting. Now, mm -hmm. there's a difference between interest-only. Um, so all right, we'll not go into that because we're, we're going to be here forever. Um, yeah. That's another story of the difference between interest-only. We've done it on previous shows. And, and, and please feel free to look back the playlist on YouTube. There's a huge playlist of all the 20 shows before that we've done and the, the, the podcast as well attached to it. And you can get wealth information on that if you keep reading and, and listening to them. Uh, the mother of all skill is repetition. I do this yeah. every single time. So when I come to do my decision, there I've got, when I've taken my rent away from my mortgage, I've got 366.56 per month after the mortgage is paid. Most important thing for me is the mortgage is always paid. Come hell or high water, you have to make sure the mortgage is always paid. So you've got £366 if you're renting that at 475 every month after the mortgage is paid. Now, Normally, we we'll talk about gross yield. Gross yield is when it's the purchase price, okay, divided by the maximum rent. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the gross yield is, 9.5%. But if I use the bank's money and to leverage my position here and get 37,500 of them at 3.74, I'm putting less money in. So my total money in is there. So I then I leverage that up to 19.6%. I put another ten percent yield on that, yeah. just by using the bank's money and putting less of my own money in. That's because if my money's in, it's it's nine and a half. If I put the bank's money in in my place, it, I'm getting at three point four seven. Yeah. So I'm benefiting from five percent every single time, extra over and above, plus the 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 benefit of using the bank's money even more to leverage it. So that's nineteen point six after the with the mortgage. So the leverage is better off by ten percent. Now. Overheads. What 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 overheads do we have? Insurance? Well, you'll you'll have your landlord's insurance. You'll have uh, agency fees if you've got an agent managing the, the, the property. Typically, um, agents about all in about fifteen percent a year. Yeah, including VAT and things about fifteen percent a year. Yep. 
and then you've got your initial fees to put a tenant in yeah um and you've got insurance and you, you know you've got day-to-day -day stuff you might do minor repairs here and there but remember you've put eight grand into refurb it yeah so I was going to say because your, your refurb costs in there because for that yeah. one about six to do the day so in that scenario if you bought that for that price you'd be sitting at a 12 percent net return that's with somebody else managing it so that's effectively yep. perfect passive so 12 percent net return your payback in the years if you didn't touch that money would be eight per, eight, eight, eight years you'd have that money back that you put mm -hmm. in which is that so that's the payback so to get that money back there it would take you eight years what you've got in and after eight years we no even remortgaging, no even doing anything else, just leaving as it is, taking all the money, plowing it all back in, leaving it where it is, and it would actually you get your money back like that over the over the next eight years. That's how that scenario works. Okay, yeah, that's, that's no bad. Okay, so every eight years, your your money doubles effectively what you've got in. Not the property price, remember. Property price, everybody's going about saying property price is increasing every 10 years, like doubling every 10 years. You're delusional. Property prices are doubling every 15 to 20 years. That's how you should be looking at it. Not every 10 years. Where they're getting that from is people on a course <laughs> making this up to make things, oh, buy my course because the property market is still great. Uh, no, you have to look for these good deals. Um, so your net profit is basically that. So if you really wanted an income out of this before tax in that scenario, you'd be coming out with £224 a month for that investment. Which is good, that's good. That's all right. And then you get taxed on that income. So, you know, just putting 22500 in, you're getting £224 a month for that. This is where the stress testing comes in. I'm glad you asked me that, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just, I keep going away. Um, stress testing. Right. Okay. Let's look at scenario. You might have had to pay more for this property. Let's be honest. Because typically our next local authority now is about 70 grand, isn't it? Yeah. Everything else is all right, the deal and everything. Now, see how a lot of changes and it goes down to 7.7%. Mm -hmm. And then you're 180 quid because your interest rate's going up, but you're still locked in for five years. Yeah. But this is where I would stress test something. I mean, you're still over 300 cash a month before the mortgage is paid. So if you're paying a lot more for a property, this is where you've got everything else is right in here, you see. Mm -hmm. And this determines, this is where I talk to people about, this is what determines how much you should pay for a property. So when I go to an estate agent and, I, and they've got it on at 70 grand and I say, look, you know, I'm going to offer you 63 because that's where my numbers work. That's what I'm doing here to get my return that I want in my stress testing. That's where my numbers work. And that's where I say that's where I'm in. It's nothing personal. It's just where my numbers work. If they don't want to accept that, fine, I'll move on to the next person. Yeah. Um, so it's not trying to get it cheap. It's actually just where my numbers work. Sometimes my numbers work at the home report value. Sometimes they don't. Clearly, that then walk one, 50,000, that's the home report value. That worked definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, so 70,000, and we'll have that there, and then we'll walk through the scenario. Itself. So, this is where I come in to say um, what happens, this and what happens. Well, interest rates can't go up in that scenario, can they? Because they're locked for five years. But what happens if they're 6% after it comes out? Where are you now? Still making 800 for it. Yeah. You're still, you're still okay. I mean, it's not the greatest. Remember, you've still got these. Tax. 
Taku. If you have a need, it's an opportunity. If it really gets that bar, and you could take it back and manage yourself. But it's, it's a very good cost. You have a dart at the bottom of the lake. You have an extra 1700 in there. And you're still okay. You're still really worried that much. You have two cents. So I'll keep it to the end of the evening. See that? And that's because in that location, it's not the empty. And what happens? So what happens? 400. You're open now. You're doing worst case scenario. And we were up at 475. I mean, at 70 grand, you might not even need to, but you know, you can change these numbers again because the grand is ready to go, really, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think if one of these flats are coming in at 70, then you're going to you're going to want it. So, so you're only going to have about two grand. So your 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 net return at that rate at the twelve months at seventy grand at three point seven four at four hundred and seventy five a month, um, is a uh, two thousand net profit, which is a hundred and eighty quid a month um, before tax income, if, if if that's what you're wanting an income, um, and these are in a ten year payback on the initial amount you've got in if you get your mortgage at that, uh, and then you're leveraging your position as well. You've got. 7.6% gross yield if all your money's in. If you use the bank's money, that jumps up to 17.4% mm -hmm. gross yield after the mortgage of your money. And so you're leveraging your position again by 10% in that scenario. So let's look at one of the one bedrooms. We had one of the other on um, 40, 40, 000, 50, yeah. No, we had, we had one on 50,000. We'll use the bigger one. Uh, right, 50, okay. We'll put 50 in, we'll keep the same scenario, keep the same deposit, interest rates are the same, um, clearly, and we were looking at 375, weren't we? Mm -hmm. So 375, occupancy rate, are you still making 11%? Yeah, that's good. I'm going to run it and buy that flat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm giving away all the goods here. Is that, is, that the one, is that the one with the sitting tenant? That is potentially the one with the sitting tenant, absolutely. It might be, it might not be, but I tell you what, if they're a sitting tenant and they're on if they're on a uh, universal credit, then they'll get three seven five Yeah. Is it three seven three? Three seven three, yeah. So they'll get universal credit, so they'll get that. So if it's eleven percent return, nine years payback. Um let's let's look at stress testing again. So in that scenario, what happens if uh, interest rates go up to eight? The breaking even. Right. To 8%. In the likelihood of 8% after the five years is, is low. Uh, listen, if we're 8% after, uh, after five years, we're all going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. You know, that's what I always think to myself. Everybody goes, what happens if we're at 10%? Guess what? We're Everybody all going to hell. It's yeah. like if you're, all at, if you're at 10%, everybody else is at 10% and we're all going to hell. That's mm -hmm. it. And, and everything's going to go. So I kind of, I kind of think, I wouldn't worry about that. The government's going to step in at some point in time. The government doesn't want the same problem as they had before. I think but it's good, I more it's good to stress test. That'll be the case. Uh, it's good to stress test the worst case scenario, like you say. Yeah. And what happens if rent uh, decided a, a one bedroom bed set of limbs, um, you know, 250, you're still making money. Yeah. Still making 100. So um, so you're still at 373 is, is a good deal. Um, if interest rates go up to 8%, you're breaking even. If occupancy rate drops, I would bet on six. Yeah, six months again, fifty percent occupied, and it won't be occupied um, because that one's already occupied now. Mm -hmm. So your money from day one, which is what we like in terms yep. of uh, thing. But they did say it was it was probably going to have to be a cash buy because it's above a pub, and very few lenders will lend above a pub. So that means you're only going to get an eight percent, eight and a half percent gross yield, mm -hmm. and that's less than what you'd get as if you bought one off and, and leveraged it for a lender. Use, use Plus the fact you'd enough. get more properties. Um, if you pumped all your money into here at 50 grand, you're only putting 16 and a half in here. So if you had a 50 grand deposit um, to put down, you, you would get you would get three of them, wouldn't you? Yeah. They have 49 and a half. See that? Mm -hmm. so if you had 50 grand to invest here, right there, and you bought them all at 50 grand, the one bedrooms, you'd be making 450 quid a month before tax um, for, for, a, for an, uh, an income fund for yourself. Plus the fact is you've got now £150,000 worth of property, and in the next 20 years, that property will double. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's what happens. It usually doubles in the next 20 years. So that would you would then add another 150 on onto what you're making. And you've, and you've basically been paid to wait for the property to go up in value. That's mental, eh? 
Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Crazy. So uh, that's, that's, what you're that's doing. the scenario I would see in terms of where we are. Um, have we got any, any questions? Uh, yep. Yeah, there's right. Here we go. What's the going rate to have access to Jim's magical spreadsheet? If they click the link and identify themselves, oh, and you'll have to. We'll have to recruit you. I, I've got a funny feeling it could be Kevin. We'll have to recruit you, Kevin, and you'll have to. You'll have to. You'll have to buy into us for free. <laughs> but you'll have to. You'll have to shake your hand under your elbow and lift your lift your leg and shake shake your hand under your leg and stuff like that and show your left nipple. Um, <laughs> it does, mate. I just checked on, fa on my Facebook to see if I can see who that is. If it is Kev, I'll, I'll send it across. Um, uh, listen, guys, um, uh, by all means, there's a link in here as well to Richard, um, to his email address. Just email Richard and yeah. uh, you know for more information. And Rich could touch base with you, with your contact details and that, have a wee conversation with you. And we could we could, we could could suit something that best, best suits for you. Um, this spreadsheet, by the way, um, to a Facebook user, uh, this actually gets updated constantly. Because it's like Windows One and Windows Two and Windows Three Point Five, Windows Three Point Six. I think we're on every we're single on time I look at a spreadsheet. I've actually got a spreadsheet, um, a, a different version of this. Um, I'll actually show you. Hopefully, do you think that's us covered everything on stress testing? Yeah, that was quite good. That I mean, and I know I'm going to say that that was quite clear and and uh, explanatory to me, and it made sense. Yeah. But if it doesn't make sense to people. Um, you could watch it back and then, of course, just come to us and we can maybe explain over it. Over and over again. Yeah. Open heck. It's like, you know, I've just, I've, just, I've just let you see how you make a fortune. Look at what happens if you have um, a, a 10 of these. Look, you've got £500,000 worth. You've only put 150 grand in, by the way. Yeah. You get 10 of these at that price and you're now making, you've, and you, you've got 150 grand in, you've got £500,000 worth of property and in 20 years' time, you add £500,000 when the double in value to your income. Mm -hmm. Mental. There's the wee scenario in the bottom, look, 20 years' time. Look, capital appreciation, 500000 Profit, 366. Return on investment, almost 590% return on investment. Yeehaw! I got 25400 since I've started percent, since I first started in Vitalet. 25400 do you think I might know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Quite possibly. Um, okay, guys, I, listen, I don't say that to Crow. I just, l l to let you explain, it's like track record enough to know what I'm doing. But yeah. you can see that easily. Anybody that's got any, any money out there sitting in the bank at 150 grand and you're not earning anything on it, you could be earning about 590% over the next <laughs> over the next 20 years. That's yeah. mental, eh? You could be earning 12 and a half passive because <laughs> we could be managing it all for you. Mm -hmm. um, 12 and a half passive every year. Or anything. Hey, listen, even even 8% passive. It's like flipping heck. You're not getting that in the bank. You'll never get that for years to come. Um, so that's probably the classic scenario. I mean, you could even play about with that number and say, this is where I play about with the number and say, okay, I'm all right at 11% here, okay? And I'm all right at 10 years return on investment. Uh, for, you know, what, what will it take if I have to pay 60 grand for a one bedroom? Um, okay, I'd get 8.1%. I'd get also the capital appreciation every year. Um, that's not included in that, pay, that net return there, by the way. The, the, that's only on your income that you generate every every month, every year. Um, yeah. So that's why that is. And then the pay, but the payback down here is over ten years at five percent appreciation every year. It's not compounded. I've just got five percent simplified on the original investment. And then over the years, it comes to about two hundred and thirty-six percent return on investment. Um, if you want an income out of it for investing twenty grand, nineteen thousand four hundred, you could make one hundred and thirty-one pound a month um, just to tied you over for 20 grand in no brainer it's like why are we why are we no why is no everybody doing this um because they don't understand the process how to do it they need help in doing it um so that's where we are with that right now uh well i'll stop sharing that yeah yeah that was good uh, and like we say it's good um uh, this video is here it's on the playlist on youtube and things watch it over uh, uh, over and over again if you like uh, if, if it didn't quite make sense the first time round, and that's the beauty of always being there for everyone to, to yep. view. Afternoon, Perry. Afternoon, Perry. If you've if, if you've just joined us, you better go back and start to the. You have to go back and watch it, yeah. Because I'm about to blow your mind. <laughs> it's like wow. It's like you know when I look at this every single time. This is how simple it is for me. 
Um, so when I go back and work out these numbers, as I said before, when I'm looking at that, I will then work out my tolerance about how much I want to pay for a property uh, based on the information I've got in there. Um, that that's exactly that's that's exactly how I do it um, for that very reason. It, it just tells me straight away what I should be paying. Yeah, so so when I work it out, I say there's my tolerance here, and I say I tell you what, I'm really wanting to pay back, and, and I'm 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 not really. I'll, I'll look at these numbers and I think what happens if I paid seventy grand for it. And then I work out and think I'm okay with that. And then I'll start stress testing at 70 grand and see what happens if this drops to 300. Um, what happens if this occupancy rate is only 10 months? Um, what happens if these interest rates are 6%? And it's like, no, I'm in trouble. Um, mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? So that's exactly what the whole yeah. stress testing is all about. So I'm, 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 I'm saying, like, I'm a thousand pound down, but by the way, my overheads are 900. So I'm mm -hmm. still paying my mortgage just in that scenario. But what's the likelihood of occupancy rate, interest rates, and rent being all different, all negative at the same time? You've you've obviously got three point four seven there because you've got it fixed for five years, so that's a definite. So even if even if occupancy rate goes down and rent goes down, uh, then you're still okay. You're still okay. But you're, you're not going to get a double whammy like that. Once you've got somebody in, it's very unlikely you're going to get that occupancy rate's only thing. Your tenant might not pay the rent. But then, you know, that's where the occupancy rate probably comes in as well, because if they're in for 12 months and they're only paying 10 months rent, that's the occupancy rate there. Yeah. I know it's occupancy rate, but it still works the same way. Yeah? Yeah. So hopefully, that's given everybody what we do with stress testing. We've not even got any time for anything else, have we? No. I know, <laughs> but that was, that was a, they, they were really good examples, and I think that, that was quite a clear expl explanation of how it works and how how best to do that and, and stress test. I think it's a lot of people do, and they, they wonder, how do, I, how do I work out if this is going to be a good buy to let? What is it, what is it I'm supposed to be looking at? Um, so that's exactly how you do it. Um, and then a lot of people were kind of on the fence about what they should be offering and things as well. Um, and that's the best way to work tell out. Tells it straight away. And that's, I know the rent I'm going to get because I speak to you. Mm -hmm. I know what the minimum rent I can get so I can speak to you. So I know my tolerance, but I can put in my spreadsheet. I know the occupancy rate because you tell me that. And then it's like how, you know, how popular. I mean, I know myself a wee bit now, but you've got you've got more of me on the ground because you're at it every day where I don't yeah. get involved in it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, I, I just make the decisions at that level and say, yep, we're buying it. Go and buy it. Um, and that's it, really. So that's all yeah. I'm doing. Um, and that's how it's easy to do. That's how it's easy to do armchair investing. If you are time poor, right, and you're cash rich, this is what you should be doing. This is how you should be doing it. Because this is exactly what I do. Yeah. This is the property time machine. This is what will get back the money to release you from having to work all the time and kill yourself because you have no time, because you're working all the time to generate money to keep your lifestyle going. This is what you do. You reinvest it in this, and it gives you your time back because that money you're reinvesting replaces the money you're earning, and you're trading time for money. This isn't trading time for money. This is like a book. It's like royalties. You've written the book. In other words, you've created the property. You've, you've done it all up. You've put the tenant in, and then it starts to pay you like a book does for royalties when people buy it. That's exactly what this is. It works every single time, every single time for the people that work it and keep at it and stay the course. We talked about last week about this long-term thing, about compounding wealth. Watch that as well if you've not watched that, because in the first couple of years, you know, first five years, it's like, well, I've only got two properties. But then I demonstrated after 15 years, you've got How 28 properties. Up. Yeah. And the compounding, because it compounds yeah. after the first first five years. It's like, oh, it's not going anywhere. Maybe I should exit it. It's too much hassle. And it's like, it's no too much hassle. They've not given enough time. If you watch last yeah. week's show, if you go back to last week's show and this playlist we've got in here, it'll blow your mind and it'll show you straight away about compounding wealth and how you don't look at short term. You look at the long term effect and you look in 15, 20 years time and it's wow. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. That's us, Richard. Any yeah. questions or you want to finish off? No, that was really good. Um, I, I think that was a good uh, exercise to cover today. Um, and I think a lot of people will benefit from that because it, it does answer a lot of the questions that a lot of people have or it shows you how to how to answer them yourself. Um, and always speak to, like you say, have the right people do things for you or speak to the right people to help you do things. Don't waste yeah. your time doing it yourself. When you don't have to. I mean, it's so many people, I had somebody come on the other now and says, I've, I've, I've lost £12,000 in rent. How do I evict my tenant? And I'm like, what? It's like, we no managed an event. No, I self-managed. Oh, my God. 
It's like uh, unbelievable. See, I didn't anyway, have any, another story. Never any problem. Guys, that's us till next week's Wealth Creation Show, and I'll see you on then. If you want us to talk about anything in particular, please feel free to mention it because I will talk about yeah. it because I've probably done it. Okay, bye bye for now. Bye.